to the basement. Fun little project today. This walking stick was a gift to a very close friend of mine. And he really likes it. However, it's a smidgen short. So, today's project is to extend this walking stick by give or take one inch. There's a couple ways we could go about it. We could turn a new tip for it that's longer than the current one is. And I may end up doing that. It also needs a rubber tip. I think I can get one of those at Ace Hardware. But I think I want to go a different direction. So the way this walking stick is made is it has this brass ferrule that is attached to the wood. It's down around a tenon and then screwed down into there. And it's nice and solid. So I think what I want to do is I want to create a one inch extension that will thread into the ferrule and then have female threads to receive the head screwed into there. So what we'll need is a piece of brass that's give or take the same OD as this so that we can turn it down to match. And then we'll measure and recreate the male threads for this end, female threads for this end, screw it into the extension, and the project will be finished. Enjoy. Seeing if I happen to have anything that's already a similar ish dimension. So we need about point nine five. So this is a doorknob off of a lever, Schlage lever set, 0.981, inch and a half, yeah that'll work. Nice thick cylinder of brass, most of an inch and a half long, ready to turn. So first we have to get this lobe cut off of here. So I'm using the indicator to get it more or less equal on three sides. So side one, 29, 29, 29. Remember, we're going for 948, 964, and it's real close to cleaning up, but it hadn't yet. Looks like we just got it to clean up, 948. Let's face this end. So for the male threads, these, I think, were are actually part of the casting. I think they should be a little taller. So that's reading 840. I'm going to judge that they should actually be about 12 thousandths higher. So we're going to go for 852. There we go. That's got to be 850 or... Very close to it. Yep, 850 on the money. I measured these threads and they're a metric 1.75. So I have gotten out my homemade 19 tooth bull gear. I've set my gear box for 11 and a half threads per inch because according to my chart, if you go watch my other video about making your own gears for metric threading, that will produce a metric uh, 1.75 with six tenths of one percent of inaccuracy and I'm following uh, Joe Pizinski's how to on threading away from the chuck 
So I have my threading tool mounted upside down and I'll actually be threading in reverse. Yes, this chuck screws on. No, I do not expect it to unscrew under this load. It's not a significant load. I will not be putting a lot of torque on it and I have never uh, seen it have a problem. I will not be disengaging the half nut. I'll keep it engaged and simply run the lathe in reverse to get it back to the starting point. So I'm kind of going in until I'm cutting a bit of a channel, not much of one. Alright, now I'm going to just measure that. Yes, that is a 1.75. Come back to the start. Dial in. Five thousandths. Other than it's pretty cockeyed. Uh, it's like the threads that are in here are really going <laughs> at a substantial angle. Okay, a bit of a snag. The uh, camera battery died in the middle of um, operations. So I think where we left off is I had just finished threading this end. So at that point I flipped it around, trued it up, drilled and bored all the way through 5 eighths of an inch. Actually not quite all the way through. If you can see down in there I left a flange about an eighth of an inch thick and I will drive a big general purpose kind of drywall screw through there into the wood of the walking stick to help hold the thing on. So I have drilled that hole. I've also counterbored this end area where the threads need to be. And I made that area the same ID as the threaded area that was already on the end of the walking stick. And then I used this boring bar. I thought I had this all on camera. I, w I went along even giving helpful hints as we went. <clears throat> but I used this boring bar with the cutter turned upside down and the lathe running in reverse and threading away from the chuck. Exact same kind of procedure as the outside thread just inside and the head of the walking stick fits nicely into it. What's not so great is that the tap that was used, I think they must have used a tap to tap this ferrule, it went in sideways, it went in cockeyed. So as you can see, that thing is sideways. I don't know how clear it is to you, but it is bent pretty substantially. So what I've done is I've put a marker, a Sharpie mark, at the point that it uh, needs to rock in order to straighten out. And what I'm going to try to do, like here, this gap needs to be closed upward. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to file the back side of the threads at this mark and the front side of the threads at this mark to see if the ferrule can actually kind of rock on the thread axis and come up tighter in a way that I am much happier with. So, uh, I'll actually use the chuck just for uh, kind of work holding, just to make the part hold still. And then I will. 
So the first thing is to screw it on and ascertain mentally which side I'm looking at. So here, I want it to rock down and away from me, which means that here the end threads are the problem. So I will just take a file and file down the top level of the end threads. In fact, I'm going to take this triangular file and try to file out the actual thread root a little bit. I'm trying to get rid of any material that would prevent the ferrule from, from rotating downward. So on this side, at this mark, I want it to be able to rotate upward. And so what's preventing it from rotating upward is these threads up here close to Mark right here, right here, right here. File it down. And file. Back a little gentle, way down in that thread root. Just a little bit of hexar. Trying to take it real easy. Because obviously I don't want to ruin the kind of structural integrity of these threads. Oh, that's definitely better. All right, so putting it in the machining vise on the mill, giving it a little squeeze, it kind of popped down into place. I think it's good enough. All right, now for a little brasso to give it the final polish. So I'm gonna use Loctite 680 to join the original ferrule to the new extension. I can uh, put the Loctite in there liquid, bring it up tight, stick it in the vise, get it to kind of straighten out, and it will set up pretty much with the strength of the original brass. Probably soldering would be a smidgen stronger, certainly silver soldering would be much stronger, but I don't want to burn off the nickel plating that's on the original ferrule. Screw that together the edge that I want to cock. Yeah, I believe that'll work. And there we have it. So now to attach it to the walking stick, I'll put some epoxy in here, drill through there, and a, a single long all-purpose screw down into the walking stick to hold that on the end. Drill through here. I'll be using this fairly heavy-duty deck screw. I will be pilot drilling. That seems pretty close. That's the original alignment. I believe that's about enough depth. Okay, there's the original alignment there. And Oh, that, that's seated. Screw the head of the walking stick back in one final time. And there we have it. The walking stick has been extended. One extended walking stick. Custom made for tall people. Thanks for watching.